You're never alone. Never alone. Sunday, February 23rd, 2020. I want to submit to you a brief message out of God's Word, the Bible. I have countless books in my collection, but the Bible, the Bible, look, the Bible is the most prized and important book that I possess. And I want to take a few words of Jesus. He is always the featured attraction inside the sanctuary recording studio of this ha, miraculous New Greater New Bethel Baptist Church of London, Alabama. Jesus made a promise to me. And I can hear Charles Haddon Spurgeon saying that no scripture is of private interpretation. The Bible said it too. And if God made a promise to Abraham and Moses, that promise is extended to me. And he said a few words in Matthew chapter number 28 that I want to use as a point of departure. Go ahead and deliver this message and take my seat. Jesus said, I am with you always. I am with you always. That meant, as far as you go, I'm with you. And in every way that you go, <laughs> I'm with you. My friends, <sighs> I, I'm never alone. One match, one match stick can light great fires. Just one. Jesus knew about electricity. He knew about natural gas, all of the natural resources. Ha. He knew about chemistry. He knew about physics. I mean, how could he perform all of the miracles that he did without a knowledge, without an intimate knowledge of these matters? And yes, he knew about the internet. Yes. Well, I don't need to prove any of those statements because Jesus didn't bother to prove uh, his identity. He just did the work. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing the work. And I am never alone. 
This little light of mine is just like one matchstick. Are you alone today? If you are, you don't have to be alone. God is with all of his children, each and every one of them. I like the argument that Charles Haddon Spurgeon made. He uh, said that the words of our text he said in substance, not in fact, but in substance. He said that the words of our text are limitless and all-encompassing. I am with you always. You are never alone if you are a child of God. Spurgeon says there's nothing you can want. There's nothing you can ask for. There's nothing you can need in time or in eternity. There is nothing living. There is nothing dead. There's nothing dying. There's nothing in this world. There's nothing in the next world. There's nothing now. There's nothing in the resurrection morning. Nothing in heaven that is not contained in the words of our text. I will be with you always. Hebrews 13 and 5. Says I will never leave you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Let me give you a clue. Help you out a little bit. My In my daily activities. I practice the presence of God. And God in Jesus Christ is the absolute best company keeper, best friend I have. I talk to God almost all day, every day. And I want to say to you, rhetorically, of course, what a friend we have in Jesus. Mm. What a friend we have in Jesus. In truth, this is not an interrogative sentence but a declarative sentence punctuated with an exclamation mark, not a question mark. What a friend we have in Jesus. My, 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 my. Never alone. Here's what I want you to do, my friend. Here's what I do. If I say something that is unchristian, my conscience is pricked, and I quickly apologize to Jesus by saying, Excuse me, Lord. Ah, my Christian friend, you need to practice the presence of God. And when you draw near to God, the Bible says he will draw near to you. If you don't believe me, you certainly can and should believe what the Bible says. He will draw near to you. Never mind the fact that he is omniscient. He is omnipresent. Ah. Uh, so. 
He is there. If you will call on him and draw nigh to him. you really need is to ask Jesus to be your best friend. And he will. That's what I want my nephew down in. Not my nephew, but my nephews. Nieces too. That's what I want y'all to do. Keep company with Christian friends. Listen. When you make friends, be careful. You need to cut some of them loose. Especially those that use profanity and display ungodly vocabularies when you make friends with people those friends that you make make you what you are if you friends with losers you will lose they'll teach you how to lose They certainly cannot teach you how to win because they are losers. Uh, when winners are your friends, they teach you how to win. You learn how to win. I'm going to get out of here. But I want to share something with you that I discovered while preparing this message. I found a little scribble of paper in my one of my books. It had a short poem in it, or a short writing. Uh, and I don't know if. It was in my handwriting, but I don't know if I wrote it or if I copied it off, copied it from some source. I don't know where it come from, but I know I wrote it. A little poem, a little writing entitled, God Can. I want to submit this to the Langster clan and challenge all of the members of the Langster clan. Tell you first, first of all, Uncle Gray and Uncle ne and Aunt, Aunt Juanita, Uncle Gray and Aunt Neat alone had combined assets approximating a million dollars. You didn't know that, but I want to serve that notice on you, and then I want to challenge you, uh, and I want to tell you, listen to me good now. God has laws and he has a financial plan for your life. And that financial plan, Langster clan, includes tithing. Listen, if you cannot make it on 90%, that other 10% is not going to help you. Friend of mine tithed on $300,000, bought a new home, and invited me over to bless his new home. A lot of you all don't believe in tithing. I'm going to read the poem to you just a minute or so, but what I want you to do is follow 
a winner. Send that 10% to 305 Wolf Street and make it payable to Greater New Bethel Baptist Church. Unprecedented solicitation. I don't I, I, I want I, I want you to be blessed. And this is how you get blessed. This is how you get God's financial plan to work in your life for your life. 305 Wolf Street, Linden, Alabama, zip code 36748, Greater New Bethel Baptist Church. And watch God work. Here's a little poem, and I'm going to get out of here. The title of it is God Can. And the Bible says that he did all of these things that I'm going to list. I got 10 things listed down here under what God can do. God can make a man. He made me. And I think he did a pretty good job. God can make an iron axe, a metal axe, to float on the water. He can suspend the laws of gravity anytime he gets ready. Ready. God can make a donkey talk. God can make money in a fish's mouth, in the mouth of a fish. God can make dry bones walk. He can make the sun stand still and stop moving. God can make the dead get up, live, walk around. He can make the sun, moon, and stars. He can make a rainbow, beautiful rainbow. Finally, God can make night turn to day. My friend, if I have attained any success in life, it is because and only because of who I keep company with. A.C., I'm going to call your name. I don't want to call you. AC, let me tell you something. Cut them losers or loose. Get you a total and complete new set of friends. If I have attained or achieved any success in life at all, it is because And only because of who I keep company with, God, always with me. I am never alone. And when I hang out with God in Jesus Christ, I rise. I rise. I win. And you will win too. Never am I alone. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. We'll give you this and get on out of here. I'll try to get out of here inside of 20 minutes. <sighs> Hebrews 13 and 5 says, let your conversation be without covetousness. You need to look that word up in the dictionary. C-O-V-E-T-O-U-S-N-E-S-S. -E -E -S -S. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things 
as ye have. For or because he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Never alone. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, he's able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. The only wise God to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now henceforth and forevermore. 